first and foremost, I did finally get a real, <laughs> uh, well, a new, a new outlet put in over here. This is the Anima 1450, just like you would have, you know, for a dryer or whatever. And so I have that plugged in now, and I got this little wraparound duber thing. Um, it just kind of like, the charger just kind of hangs and plugs in right there. And this works out perfectly, because this is like right where the charge port of the car is. So I literally just turn around and plug it in. And it's way faster. It's so much faster. Um, the Using the outlet over there, just a regular 110 outlet, it was taking... Um, well, it would charge five miles per hour of charge. Now it's charging 30 miles per hour of charge. So yeah, I mean, I, I've not had any kind of range issues at all at this point because of that. I, I go out and I drive around and when it gets down around 100, I plug it in and in a few hours it's charged up. It's amazing. So um, on top of that, I also got the new uh, version nine software on an over-the-air update. There's a few things that are different about it, and I thought I would point them out here. Okay, so let's try that again. <laughs> Some of you may have seen an earlier repost from this video, or an earlier post of this. This is a repost from a video that I put up yesterday, and I decided to redo it for multiple reasons. One, I had the camera angle about like this most of the time. Not so good. Hopefully it's better now. And the other reason is because I, I was showing the navigation on my screen and um, as much as I tried to blur out, I happened to have my like actual address up there and somebody's phone number popped up at one point. It was not good. So anyway, second time around. Um, so I'm in an undisclosed location and I got some food. By the way, I don't normally go full Texan. I'm like, you know, I'm, I've, lived in, I've lived in Texas my whole life. I was born here. I don't normally go full Texan, but today I am going full Texan. I've got some golden chick. Anybody who's really from Texas knows what Golden Chick is. Anybody that says that Whataburger is the, you know, fast food of Texas, I'm like, Golden Chick. Okay, so, enough of all that. So, um, it mostly looks like it always did. You got your, uh, um, oh, I'm not in park. Okay. You got your reverse camera right there, as you can see. You've got a charging setup so you can see exactly how you're charged. That's always been there. It is in another place now as well. And then you can do voice commands like this. As you can tell, it's hearing my voice command. Yeah, it doesn't know what to do with that, nor should it. Okay. Um, so that's all stuff that's always been there. So they used to have its own phone button right here. Now the phone button is under this. And you can dial, you've got your contacts uh, that are in your phone. There's also a read sense button that I will not press because that will pull up people's actual phone numbers <laughs> for the world to see. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the phone dialing is now under here. But you also have da, 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 a web browser. Didn't used to have that before. Um, right now it's on LTE, so it might be really slow. When I was doing it before, I was at home and I think it was connected to the Wi-Fi. And it was actually pretty fast. Um, Okay, so it's not going to come up right now. But anyway, that's the web browser. Uh, this is new as well. I think this was something that was in the Model S and Model X. This is sort of a consumption chart. So you can actually see as you're driving through the day um, or on your, on your trips, on the miles that you've done le recently, you can actually see where you were spending the most, where you were regenerating the most. I think this would be really handy if you were taking a long trip and maybe part of the trip was uphill and part of the trip was downhill. Like... When I, when I go visit my family, they live west of here, which is higher elevation. So I'm just kind of curious if I'm going to expend more going out there than coming back. It'll be interesting to see, but that's the little chart that they make available now. The other thing is uh, it's got a calendar on here now. That this actually syncs with your, uh, with your phone. So when you get into the car, if you have an event in your calendar on your phone with a location, it'll automatically navigate you there, which is really, really cool. Um, so that covers all the stuff in there. Um, it's got a new AC interface, which I absolutely love. Um, it always had like two buttons here, two dots where you can control up and down and where the airflow goes. Now it's this really cool looking animation that I think actually gives you a better idea of where the air is going. But you just move it up and down like this. And you can sp split the beams. So right now it's not actually hitting my face, it's kind of hitting the side of my face. And you can do it on both sides. You can also um, 
when you set a temperature, you can sink it or unsink it. So right now, both sides of the car are coming out at 69 degrees. Um, or you can do that, hit sync. Or, so now it's unsync so that you've got like dual climate control for both sides and you still have the, the seats there. So that's just a little bit different functionality. I did notice on the radio, this is kind of cool. So right now I've got it going through my phone, listen to stuff you should know. Um, but now these buttons come up down here. It used to be under a drop menu, and now they come up right here, and the options are you know, your radio streaming, which is what they have uh, through Slack or radio. And what I like about this is now when you collapse this down, it actually will show you the most recent um, list that you listen to, don't judge me. My wife and I were having some fun. Um, so if you were listening to something earlier that you liked, you can just go back and punch it in and listen to it. And if you want to do a search, where did it go? You do search right there. Search anything you want. Gunship. Gunship. If you don't know who Gunship is, then uh, you need to know who Gunship is. And um, yeah, so all their songs come up and you can just pop whichever song you want to listen to. And it'll start playing basically like Pandora, a station based off of that song. Atari games. So this is Asteroids. They have uh, Lunar Lander, Missile Command, Centipede. I haven't played Centipede yet. And you can actually control this with the, you know, the little thumb wheels on your, on your thing here. So let's see if you can start. Oh, it's not, it's not moving. Oh, I'm about to get it. Sucks. So, can you move it one way or another? Oh, there we go. I thought you'd be able to move it. Oh, you can move it up and back on this one. Ah, there we go. So, I'm using this to just kind of move it back and forth and. <laughs> Enough of that. But um, I tried for the first time the other day the auto lane change function. I'd never done that before. So you're going down the street in autopilot and you want to change lanes, you just hit the signal and it'll look and make sure it's clear and change lanes for you. That was really crazy. I'm still not fully comfortable with autopilot. I don't really get a lot of chances to use it. So um, it's still kind of new to me. But that was that was just amazing to actually see the car do this and of course there's a curb right there but it never got near the curb it was safe um it's it's, it's a crazy thing i know something they were gonna try to do on this on this version was like on and off ramp functionality so you could actually navigate onto a highway and it would just go up and off the on ramp so like if it was if you're going on autopilot and you know you need to take an exit it'll go ahead and get your car into the exit lane when it needs to be there and take you off the road before you take control of the car again. Um, <clears throat> I think that's basically how that works. They weren't 100% with it, so they didn't put it in this version, but that's what they're working on. That's what's gonna be coming up next. And I think that's how we're gonna get to self-driving. It's just like one little thing after another, after another little incremental thing. There'll be some other little, uh, you know, a more advanced thing. I'm trying to think of what it would be like right now, maybe reading stop lights and stop signs. Um, you know, it's, it's just going to be little things like that until, uh, and that's why I've always said that I don't think it's going to be that crazy when self-driving takes over. People are always like, oh, it's going to be such a, like, nobody's going to be able to handle it. Everybody's going to freak out. No, by that point, there'll have been so many, I mean, 10 years ago, if anybody thought that you had a car that could automatically press the brakes when, you know, a collision avoidance system kind of thing, 10 years ago, that would have been considered witchcraft that's like crazy now almost every car has it any new car that comes out so these things are going to just keep filtering down filtering down to where it's just not going to be that weird when it really takes over that's my true belief but um anyway again cool thing about this car it automatically updates the these um over the air updates and 
my I woke up one morning my car was doing something that it couldn't do yesterday and that's that's amazing I think that's my favorite thing about this car and people keep asking um, how I'm liking the car and everything and I gotta say the longer I have it the more I like it the more comfortable I get with it the more uh, we bond <laughs> so to speak um, it starts to feel natural to me and it starts to feel comfortable and I just really appreciate what this car can do and I think that this is where like all technology is going but you know this is this is a smart car this is like a smartphone it's a smart car it can sync with your calendar it can kind of anticipate your needs and take you where you need to go and we're gonna be seeing more and more of that I know that this can actually tie into smart homes so that like as soon as you pull up like I've already got it so that when I pull up my garage door automatically opens um, but it could sync in a way that like when you pull up the doors unlock the temperature you know cools off or warms up for you um, little things like that maybe certain light scheme comes on when you walk in I mean all this stuff is gonna to tie together and we're gonna be seeing a lot more of it 